Welcome to Famous Fortunes. I hope you are well. Welcome back to the greatest show on earth with your host, Lord of the Orbs, Lord Famous Fortunes. I actually found the footage uh, of the downed, you know, UFO incident in Las Vegas, and they're looking in the backyard. And I don't think anyone's cracked onto this just yet, but there's actually you can clearly see the nine foot shadow person. It's really clear, and I don't know if people they were trying to point out something near the tractor. We're going to get into this uh, soon. I'm just figuring out how to deliver this to you guys. But in any event, there's a bit of uh, an update for you. I found the footage. Uh, it was, it's out there. It's out there. You've got to know what to look for, though. You can kind of see it move behind the fence, and you're like, well, what's that? No, it could just be a shadow. But if you actually look above the fence line, it's this, it's there as well. It's a shadow being. Uh, so let that be known. We'll get that out soon. Uh, today's episode, we are going to look at Doria and the meaning to her of the tattoo and we're going to look at that uh today on famous fortunes we're going to look at the meanings we're going to do a deep dive we're going to see you know what megan thinks of it what does harry think of the tattoo what does doria think of the tattoo uh and we're going to do a dive today we're going to dive right in i hope you're doing fantastic on this saturday episode of the show Let's get in. Uh, I'm going to have some tea first, as is traditional on this show. It is very traditional to have some tea. Skinny Pig Coast is uh, serving me well. Hand-painted, of course. Absolutely love it. Work of art. Cherish it forever. Let's get in to some tea. Big thank you to... Big thank you to... Let's get do a thank you first. And today's thank you goes to... Two clicks, and I'll tell you. To the J-Tabs. The J-Tabs. Uh, love everything about your channel, uh, they say, and a, and a heart, a love heart. So I appreciate that. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I really enjoy the channel myself. It's, uh, you know, actually there was a comment. Someone said something the other day. Uh, it was yesterday, I think it was. And I want to read the comment because it's, it's about starting another channel. I know a lot of people have asked for it. Just a second. Here we go. Uh, Sharon says, I wish you would start another channel. I love hearing what you have to say. You are amazing. I agree with you about the UFOs. You just mentioned another channel, start one. Where did that alien go? It seems the paranormal is exposing itself in every way. It's, it is, I think it's getting worse personally. That's my personal opinion. UFOs, ghosts, interdimensionals, uh, Luciferians, the practice of magic, our own uh, children's psychic and mental, mental abilities, cyborgs, giants, uh, below us, the sudden appearance of dragons, fairies, and other mythical creatures. Something is happening now, right now, and someone who is connected beyond the veil or someone with a deep understanding of things beyond the paranormal could be as successful as Joe Rogan. That's a big statement, Sharon. That's a big statement. I haven't given a love heart to that comment. I'm going to do it right now. Um, and and then I think the reply here is you have to be very light. If this is from Marge, Marge, member of Team Famous Fortunes. Uh, actually, no, she didn't reply this, but uh, she's. This is actually on a separate. This is a separate thing. She's. This is a. This is a comment she's left on uh, episode nine two two. The queens don't do podcasts, right? Uh, you have. She says you have to be likable to be a successful podcaster. Uh, Joe Rogan is incredibly well liked and is always surrounded by his friends. That's why he's number one on Spotify. Uh, MM is vile and no one likes it, let alone choosing to invest their free time listening to a podcast. Lord Famous Fortunes would be a fantastic podcaster. Isn't that interesting? I think there's something there's something here. There's something here, I think, not just in you know, knowledge about all the rest of it, because there's a particular type of entity on the footage that I'm going to show you. It's a particular species. I mentioned there's species of them. The Pentagon needs to just get out of this uh, control of the narrative thing because they're going to push this as aliens. They're going to push it as aliens rather than um, interdimensional demons. Basically, that's everyone knows what they are already. Everyone knows the words for it. They're going to push it like this new thing that they control and they're going to try and they're doing something with it. That's uh, We'll see where it goes, but it's not good. The, the Pentagon and all these people are trained uh, disinformation you know, psychological warfare operations, people, you know what I mean? They're not, truth and honesty isn't their real, their thing. You know, what is the first uh, rule of warfare according to Sun Tzu? And that is, uh, all warfare is based on deception. So let that be known, folks. There's, they're not being, they're not going to be honest with us. And yeah, well, what can I say, folks? We need, we need, we need some real 
clear information out there. But in any event, all right, let's get on with Doria, see what she has to say. A lot of people talking about this is actually a really interesting segue here because there's a tremendous, I see every time I go for a coffee, I'll see two people that have a snake tattoo on their forearm. It's an epidemic of snake tattoos on forearms these days. And this is directly related to UFOs. And how do you ask that? How do you, well, why? Why would I say that? You ask. And the answer is because interdimensional entities take the form of snakes. The, the worst ones take the form of snakes often. Uh, and they are um, almost gathering their people and influencing them to make these markings on their body at this time. It's, it's ramping up. It's going to the next level. It's absolutely connected. And we just need the right knowledge. It's the right knowledge. The interdimensionals have been around here for a long time. All cultures except our own accept their existence and know about them. And we are going to be led down the garden path by the likes of the Pentagon and their disinformation campaign. It is going to happen. They should be absolutely... It's it's unbelievable. It, it's almost proof that the, the they're influencing the governments to keep this information and sort of put it out the way they want. Because, yeah, humanity have known about this for a long time. This isn't news. This is not news at all. In fact, I watched the documentary on Rendlesham Forest uh, a couple of days ago. I highly recommend it. A guy goes in. He spends about, it's about half an hour on YouTube. And he goes in with this guy who's an older gentleman. He knows a lot about the spirits in the forest and all the rest of it. And they're, they're really nefarious entities there. And, yeah, I mean, it's no different to what we're talking about. It's literally the same thing. Uh, so let that be known. Uh, let it be known. I was watching this thing on the Zimbabwe incident where the, the craft landed. They wanted to take the children. That's actually a very common theme, taking the children into the craft. Uh, and again, uh, some of the things they described to me, uh, said to me that this is absolutely an interdimensional uh, thing. And they're going to, yeah, I, I think the Pentagon are going to push it as aliens. They're going to push it as aliens rather than the interdimensionals we all know and fear perhaps in some cases. <laughs> They're not good, folks. They're not good. They don't have our best interests at heart. Not the ones that are playing with the Pentagon, I can tell you that much. Uh, the general rule of thumb with interdimensionals is if they want to have contact with humans, the general rule of thumb, uh, it's a very bad sign. And you have to be very, very careful because they're, tr they're tricksters. They're very tricky entities. They're deceptive. They want to gain control and effectively be your... God. That's what they want. They want to be your God. And there are entire systems in this world built on that. Very, very well-known mainstream systems of religion that are built on that. And there are other, obviously, less well-known systems, uh, very negative systems that are built on it as well, that are more occult, let's say. But in any event, they're not from outer space, folks. They're, they're, they're right here. You can see them in forests. In fact, I, I've got... I can show you the footage. I'm not sure if anyone's pointed this out, but I will show you. Let's get on to Doria. I'm very passionate about the topic because we're going to be led down the garden path, that's for sure, by the, the Pentagon. They're such a trustworthy source of information. We should really listen to everything they say is gospel fact. All right, right. Okay. Moving on. Let's ask, why did Doria get this tattoo? Question number one. Why did Doria get this tattoo? Cards are hot. We have the Six of Cups, the Nine of Wands, the Prince of Cups, Four of Swords, Page of Pentacles, Underlying Energy, the Five of Cups. Okay, so there's there's a strong theme here of loss, in fact. I'm going to say it. There's a strong theme here of loss. Five of Cups, loss. Uh, losing something, sadness. Uh, there is a hang on. We got. I just wanted to say there's going to be. There's not. These aren't orbs. If you see them, all right. There are literally bugs in the house going crazy right now because uh, I we had these two pot plants. We've got these two lovely big uh, plants for the kitchen area, and they're just going crazy producing these little bugs. It's just ridiculous. And they're now flying around. So if you see a black thing with wings flying around, it's not an interdimensional. It's not an orb, folks. It's literally just a bug. So just let that be known for the moment. And if I if I, you hear my hands clap, it's <laughs> or you see this happening or whatever, all right, just just let that be known. So 
there's a loss. Look at this. Loss is the underlying energy here. There's significant and substantial loss on the cards uh, here. And also there's this idea of nostalgia as well. Nostalgia. Um, there's this nostalgic uh, vibe here. Uh, you could also, I mean, if you look at the subject matter, uh, these two subject matters here, um, the boy and the girl, you know what I'm saying? Nostalgia, nostalgic memories. We've got loss here as the underlying energy. Also, there's an energy here of, uh, let's say, let's go to this one first, Prince of Cups. There's an energy here of love and caring and affection, that type of thing. Uh, quite strongly, so there's a strong um, baseline of this energy here in this reading. There's also a baseline of things not working out as uh, as planned here with the Nine of Wands. There's a there's a energy of coming a long way, but not um, getting the outcome necessarily that one wanted or being hurt or injured in some way, or suffering in some way. So there is a there is this notion of suffering. There is this notion of loss. There is this notion of nostalgia. There is also a notion of, I mean, this, this person being laid to rest here. There's, a being, uh, there's an energy of being laid to rest. There's an energy here of, um, how can I say this? Uh, you know, mm, also, re re uh, reflection as well. There's a reflective energy here, um, a nostalgic energy, an energy of loss, an energy of being laid to rest, folks. And, of course, the Page of Pentacles. There's an energy here of, um, you know, let's say, uh, pages, let's say, pages, pages. Pages are um, diminutive in uh, stature, hierarchically. Also diminutive in size, physically, perhaps even. All right, we've got to be very... Cho we're choosing our words carefully today. Diminutive in age as well, perhaps. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying, folks? Do you get what I'm saying? I'm going to actually pull that page up and just get another cup of tea into me, because why not? Uh, why not? It'd be rude not to on Famous Fortunes. That's pretty much how the show goes. It's fueled, fueled 100% by Chinese tea. <laughs> maybe not. I don't think... I think maybe there's two episodes where I had... I think maybe one or two where I had a coffee and then one or two where I had a coconut water, I think. But almost every episode, 99.9% .9 of episodes, is Chinese tea. Uh, most of which I think is kind of stemmer these days. Although some of the earlier episodes I caffeine myself pretty silly. So why? Why? I'll let you read between the lines. I think I've provided enough information here to be as uh, to give you a feeling of what's happened here. Do I have to spell it out? I don't think I do in this particular instance. Okay, so what is the tattoo of? Let's throw some cards. What is the tattoo of? Uh, I think we've tried to. We've all tried to look at it. I'm sure, and. I still can't picture... It seems to be two components to it. There's a sort of inner forearm component and an outer forearm component. I, I'm a, I'm struggling to work out exactly what it is myself. So let's throw some cards. What exactly is it? Cards are hot. Four of Cups. The Magician. Four of Cups, the Magician. <laughs> page of Wands, another page, right? Just go over what that means, so I'm not going to go over that again. Uh, the Magician. Two of Swords. Mm. Prince of Swords. What is it of? And the tower, oh, the tower, the tower, it's, it's, okay, right. So we've got the same meaning that comes up for the page here. It also could be a message. Uh, it's a message. It's a, it's, it's describing some type of event. 
here. Something, um, it, it could be describing some type of event, something sudden, something unexpected, shocking even, something like that, something that happens suddenly, something that is, you know, we've gone from the Five of Cups to the Four of Cups, something that has been a disappointment, so we've got this idea of something that's a loss, something that's uh, a losing, a uh, sort of a energy of loss, regret to sort of disappointment. Uh, and this really goes along with the Nine of Wands as well that we saw previously. So there's kind of this theme here. This is not necessarily a happy thing. Okay, that's not what I'm getting. I'm not getting a happy vibe at all with uh, this. I'm getting quite the opposite. In fact, Two of Swords, it could be, this is interesting, it could be depicting two things, possibly, or, um, I mean, it could be, it could be depicting two events, or two, I don't know, people, or two, two separate things, it's, it's possible, with the Two of Swords, uh, just in its position, I would say that's, mm, possible. Possible. It's something that has been denied or something that's been blocked in some way or yeah, something along those lines. I again, it's possible. It's possible. Something, I mean, with the magician here, something, I mean, I want to say something magical, uh, something magically orientated. There's that possibly. Um, but, you know, what can I say? Can I say that for sure? Maybe with the magician, it's a strange card to have. What does it depict? Magic? Does it depict magic? I don't know. I mean, it's a strange. It's a strange card. Wanting to create something, creation, creation here. Does it? No, you know, creation from nothing, and then we have a page energy. So creating a page from nothing, or creation of a page. It's possible uh, to see that, or that creation of a page that didn't happen, and something suddenly, you know, took a turn. There's an energy of disappointment. That type of energy. Okay, energy. That's what we read on the cards. Energy, folks. Energy. Energy. Let's have some more tea while we're at it. What does... Uh, let's find out what Harry thinks of it. Actually, you know what? Let's find out what Doria thinks of it first. That's what I want to do. What does Doria think of the tag? Cards are Ace of Swords, Six of uh, Six of Coin, Five of Wands, King of Cups, Ace of Pentacles, Six of Swords. Right. What does she think of it? She's in. I, I don't know if she's fully happy with it here with the five of uh, wands is, is something is she's conflicted about it is she's some inner conflict about it uh inner conflict about it i think there's an element here of <coughs> i think i just breathed one of those bloody flies <laughs> bloody hell that's the second time today i don't have to take those plants out at least i warned you guys <coughs> told you what i can have that tea just wash it down there's some protein or whatever far out Australia, mate, what are you going to do? Just choke on an insect every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, folks. It's true. It's true. What can I say? Don't even go outside, folks. Everything's going to kill you. All right. So. <laughs> All right. All right. Moving on. Um, at least they're small. I mean, actually having a proper fly go down your throat, that's something completely disgusting. Um, all right. She's conflicted. She's conflicted with it. She... She's what's this year? She's taking. Hmm. <clears throat> I want to say here she's taking. Maybe she's taken on board what others have said or what others have given her, you know, in a way of their opinion. 
and that's given some inner conflict perhaps. Um, I think it's fair to say, and this is I'm not being you know judgmental or crit critical or anything, but it's just fair to say. Sorry, let's get the fly down. Uh, it's fair to say that um, being someone in the public eye, I mean, pap shots are being taken, right? If you get a tattoo, it's interesting, and people are going to take photos. They're going to talk about it, right? So you're going to get feedback on it. At, if you read the, what people are saying, and that could affect your opinion potentially. That's I mean that stands to reason. I'm reading between the cards, I suppose. But I think it's very hard to discern what's actually being said here. She's conflicted somewhat. I think she did or does like it, but I think there's other maybe the opinions of others or what others are sort of, you know, she's maybe she's being measured about it in one sense and another sense she kind of likes it here. But there's again this: is there more to come here with the Ace of Pentacles? Is, it, is she going to go further? It's just the beginning, perhaps. Uh, perhaps there's more to come. Maybe there's more tattooing to, to happen at this stage. Um, also, too, this could be a man. There could be a man here involved um, that is driving some of this conflict. It's possible with the King of Cups. It's possible. Uh, not outright. I have to say, I can't say for she. I can't just say, look, she loves it. I can't say that. Folks. But I can't say she hates it either. It's sort of conflicted. Some energies going on. Very, very tough one. Very tough read. You know, welcome to have a crack at a stab in the comments. Uh, have a stab. I'm not a know-it-all reader, so go right ahead. I welcome your comments. Some actually some insights that people will type up that are thought out are brilliant, and I read the comments and they're great. I'm not a guru, folks. I'm not a guru. So let's. Uh, I'm mean, just a humble tea de drinker, right? Let's uh, let's dive into the second question here. The next question on this topic, Harry. What does Harry think about this tattoo? What does he think about it? Cards are hot. Look at this. The tower. Oh wow. Oh, wow. Okay, underlying energy of the tower. Six of coins. Justice. Page of pentacles. Right. The queen of pentacles. Ten of swords. Oof. Oof. Oh, no. I don't think he likes it. I don't think he likes it. I don't think he likes this tattoo at all. Um... Another way of reading this is that, you know, you've got a, I mean, a queen of pentacles and a page of pentacles. You've got a sort of a uh, mother kind of offspring dynamic going on here and something that's, something that's come to an end, right? There's that. So you could read this as, this isn't necessarily his opinion emotionally on it, but you could read this as that's happened. And this tattoo is like a fair sort of uh, a, uh, a, like a reflection of that or a token of that or a memory of that type of thing. Um, and it just signifies that loss or that sudden event, that sudden loss, if you like, sudden ending, maybe is a better way of saying it, that symbolizes that sudden ending. So I don't think this is necessarily Harry's opinion on not liking it. So I'm going to step back from that. I'm going to walk back on that. I think we're actually seeing here. Harry, between the cards, may be emotionally involved in this. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Maybe. Okay. Next one. Harry's wife, what does she think? Let's go. What does she think? Strength. Oh, underlying energy of strength. We have death. Same as Harry. Ten of swords and death. They're sort of cousin cards, if you like. Brother and sister cards. Death is that queen of pentacles again. We're almost going to get the same reading in reverse, are we? The hanged man. The two of coins. The fool. So it's a sign of 
the underlying energy, but let's just tee this off and we'll move on to the juice, uh, the goss. <coughs> That flies giving me trouble and tell you what, just get down there, wash it down and be done. Be done, mate. Okay, so she thinks it's a sign of strength. It's a, you know, strong woman type thing. I'll leave that, you know, strength, strong woman, etc. We'll leave that there. The real goss here is <coughs> that this reading really reflects uh, very, very closely the previous one. Something's come to an end. We've got that same archetype of that mothery birth mother job. We've got a hanged man. We've got this, I mean, what, what could we say here? It, it could be a pregnancy in limbo, some type of new beginning, something along those lines. It could be um, <coughs> a new beginning relating to this. Man, oh man, that's... I did read once, there was a, a, a tyrant, Nimrod, I think his name was, and his downfall was like a fly in his ear. <laughs> it had power over like everything in Babylon or wherever it was. <coughs> And uh, he, his, his downfall was this insect in his ear. He literally couldn't get out, and it drove him crazy. Um, so there you go, folks. It's a lesson of, uh, you know, never get too arrogant, right? So uh, let's just say that the, ref the, the energy here is reflective of exactly what Harry feels, in my humble opinion. Reading between the cards, it is the same event that they're reminiscing over. So... Again, there isn't this emotional, I like it, I don't like it. I'm not seeing that. I don't feel that from the cards. There's this resonance with what's happened between the two. A resonance. There's a, a um, uh, an understanding, almost. It's almost like a, a communal event. I, that's, my, that's my humble opinion. That's my humble opinion on this situation. So with that said, I think I will leave that particular reading there because... Uh, I'm going to be very interested to hear your comments below about what you think it describes. What do you think it describes? Uh, and Chris says, greetings, Lord Famous Fortunes. I am quite mindful that your audience asks you to address many topics and that you have only so much time, but I am always happy when you mention the interdimensionals. At your leisure, please comment more, and when time permits, expound beyond into the many endless worlds beyond. I know that you limit your scope of your commentary, but again, look forward to some nuggets tossed our way. Some some nugs tossed your way, and Chris. I thank you for your comment. I thank you for your comment. And we are going to talk more about things in due course, in due course, because it's 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 going to be coming live now. And I think this is a dangerous time. Uh, it's a dangerous time indeed. It's a very dangerous time indeed because uh, of the nature of who wants to control the information that's coming out and their because the thing is, a, a, sh a small shift in perspective causes a, a monumental change in the, in, the, in the end equation. And if they come out and say, look, we've discovered this force, there's multi, you know, this non-human intelligence, right? This is, this is what I'm thinking may happen. Uh, we've discovered this non-human intelligence and there's multiple species of it. And guess what? It's... Uh, it's here to help us. It's here to help us. And they have been giving us technology. They've been this and that. We've had all these technological advances. And they want to get involved with human affairs. You know what I mean? All this type of thing. You don't know it could go there. Um, what, what, why have the Pentagon hid this information for so long? Well, the answer is technology. They've been milking technology out of these interdimensionals. What have they been giving them in return? What have they been giving them in return? My best answer, what have humans been giving the interdimensionals? Human genetic information. That's the actual, that's the actual answer in my, in my mind. That is the answer in my mind. Uh, don't ask me how I got that information. Right? Don't ask me how I got that information. If I'm not on the show tomorrow, then I've been taken to a Guantanamo. All right? <laughs> I've been taken to a black site somewhere. 
Uh, but that's it's the, it, when we're dealing with interdimensionals, it's never a one-way street. They're not bene benevolent. They're not Father Christmas. They're not going to come through from another dimension, and they're not going to talk to the people at the Pentagon or whatever. And they're not going to say, "Hey, listen, this is, you can do all this great stuff." Uh, they're doing it because they want to that information to flow into those people for for their nefarious reasons. And they're going to always want something in return. It's always a two-way deal with those entities. And it's never for the benefit of humanity. At the end, in the final equation, it's never for the benefit of humanity. So this is the thing, all right? The, we have to be so suspicious that the Pentagon is controlling this information, that they want this information to get out there. Um, so just say that, just let it be known, folks. Just let it be known. We have to be on our on our toes. Yes, the interdimensionals exist. Yes, we... Most humans believe it, okay? Most human on Earth believe it right now. So let's just look at numbers of people in world religions. Let's just have a look just while we're here. So I can give you some numbers in the world. Okay, here we go. So this is, this is from uh, the first result that comes up, the world religions map. Christians, 2.2 billion. So Christians, no know these uh, as well a few different words demons number one okay uh, number two muslims 1.6 billion uh, they're known as the jinn uh, non-religious people 1.1 billion well i don't know folks so i don't know what well, i can't i'm not sure i speak to that hindus 1 billion people well folks i mean they they're gods are interdimensional entities folks i mean <laughs> what can i say right um buddhists similar story as well interdimensional entities um so what can i say i mean it's we're talking i mean just there let's do 2.2 billion 1.6 billion 1 billion um i mean that's a lot of billions we've got here what like 3.2 4.2 4.8 4.8 4 billion people so let's say 5 billion people straight off the bat and we're not talking about people that are spiritual people that are you know had experiences we're not talking about people that see shadow people we're not seeing like we're not talking George Norrie here. We're talking 5 billion people just straight off the bat as part of their worldview for thousands of years have believed this exact concept. And now it's being repackaged to us and sold to us by the Pentagon. Yeah, I'm calling BS on the Pentagon. All right, I'm calling BS and that's all I'm going to say, folks. I'm just saying it's just BS, absolute BS. Straight up, a hot stinking load of BS. And I'm calling it. I'm calling it, folks. There are people out there that know so much more than what they're going to say to you, that it's just, it's frightening the level of disinformation. They're talking to us like we're idiots. And it's like, no, you need to just come forward and you just need to say, what have you been doing with them behind the scenes? And what are your plans for the future? That's what we really need to know from you guys. Uh, and I'm, I must say, Barack Obama, look, I'm, I'm going to put this in a video. Barack Obama in 2015 went on Jimmy, Jimmy uh, Kimmel or whatever his name is. Oh, got him. All right. <laughs> God, I'm not going to choke on another one on, on, live on camera. I'm not going to do that. Um, so Jimmy Kimmel, Barack Obama goes on and he's honest. He's completely honest. He doesn't even lie about the interdimensionals, about the aliens, he calls them, right? Okay, first of all, Barack Obama went to an Islamic school. He knows about the jinn, folks. He knows. He, know, he already knows. All right? He already knows. All right? He's one of the, let's say, I'm not saying he is one of them, but I'm just saying he has had experience in that culture. And let me just say, Indonesia, Indonesia is teeming with people that interact with jinn. I mean, literally wall to wall interaction with interdimensionals in Indonesia. It is huge over there. They, it's just a massive part of their culture. I mean, even, I mean, Bali isn't the, the Muslim side of it, but Bali, again, huge interdimensional interactions. I mean, they leave fruit and vegetables in the street for them, folks, as they do in Thailand, other parts of um, the world as well. I mean, it's, folks, <laughs> folks, let's get with the program, right? Let's just get up, let's just get up to speed here and let's get some, let's just get some clarity in what exactly we're talking about. So Barack Obama knows, he knows about this already. I mean, it's, it's, he's experienced this in a culture before. Um, and he is very, actually very honest in that interview in 2015. And I'm going to go over that as well. Uh, I'm going to go over that in detail. He's very honest and it looks like he's joking, but he's not. He's not, he's actually telling the world, but all right, I'll leave it at that, folks. I will leave it at that. Uh, 
do I think that they're providing their technology to us? It's a good question. I think it's probably more likely in our understanding to think that they're actually telling us what to do and how to do it rather than they've sort of made this in technology in their own dimension. Maybe that's true. I, I don't know about that, but but it's definitely more true that they're providing us information on, hey, do you know that you can do this with this type of energy like X-ray or muon scanning or whatever it is, right? Whatever it is, uh, all this weird stuff. So uh, let that be known, folks. Let it be known. Uh, I'm going to do an episode on it. It's going to be interesting. And we need to talk more about it because it's next level. We need to know, we need to know why they're coming out now. And the answer may be quite serious. In fact, the answer may in fact be quite serious because, um, well, it depends on, this is the thing, it depends on perspective. It depends on perspective. And this is the, this is the thing. This is the thing. So, let it be known, if you've watched this far, let it be known what your world views are. You know, like, oh, I'm a bit of this, I'm a bit of that, I've had this experience. I'd be very interested to know in the comments kind of where the audience sits on this topic. Where are your worldviews? I mean, I've spent my worldviews. Um, I've been not shy about the fact that I've had experiences with interdimensionals and I don't like to have experiences. And I'm not inviting these experiences, but, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, and... I want to know your experiences. I want to know your beliefs as well. Like, oh, I'm, I'm raised this way. I kind of believe this. Da, 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 da. I've had this experience. I know many people in the comments have had these experiences as well. I know many people have seen shadow people. I know many people um, have had this type of thing happen. And let it be known. I want to know. I want to know where you're at. I want to know where you're at. What does your, your traditional culture say? Because I bet you anything, if you go to speak to your mother or your grandmother or whatever, uh, whoever about this, they're going to say to you, oh, yeah, we know about them, et cetera. You know, this is like, this is our traditional beliefs. This is how we deal with them. We, we generally stay the F away from them or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, and let it be known. Let it be known. I can't wait to see you in the comment section.